Hey everyone. So we all know that Python is widely used in the data science and machine learning space. And one of the things that it offers you is the is to be able to create Jupyter notebooks. So in this video, I'm actually going to show how you can use C sharp within a Jupyter notebook. And then we will use the auto ML package for ML.net to create an auto ML experiment. So the first thing is that you need Jupyter installed. And the easiest way to do that is to install Anaconda. As you go to anaconda.com and click download and then download here. I highly recommend the Python 3.7 version. Uh, Python 2 is actually, at the time of this recording, will be totally deprecated in just a couple of months. So I think the January 1st, 2020, they will completely stop supporting Python 2. So after you have that installed, you have an Anaconda prompt and you can just search for it and launch it from your startup menu. And once you're in there, you want to make sure you have the .NET CLI. And if you install the .NET Core SDK, you, you, would, you would get this as well. And to install the C Sharp Jupyter kernel, you first need to install the .NET try tool. So we do that, the .NET and tool install, it will be globally, the dash G, and .NET try is the tool we want to install. And then we need to add a source. So that would be in the .NET my git. Go click to do that, I already have it installed, but once you do it, it will probably take a few minutes to install. And once that is installed, you can just do .NET try, then Jupyter install. That will install the C sharp and the F sharp Jupyter kernels. As a quick test, you can do Jupyter kernel spec and then list. That lists all, all the kernels that you have installed and you should see .NET C sharp and F sharp. Now once that's done, you can launch either Jupyter Notebook. Personally, I'm a fan of the Jupyter Lab, so I'll start that. And once that loads, you should start, you should see some more options for to create notebooks, C sharp and F sharp. So let's create one. And just to kind of prove that this is in C sharp, I would do console.write line. Hello Jupyter. There we go. And it printed out for us, so it kind of helps prove that we are using C sharp here. So I mentioned that we can use this to use the ML.NET auto ML feature. And to do that, we need to install some NuGet packages. So how do we do this in, in a C-sharp Jupyter notebook? Well, it's actually pretty easy. First we do pound R to kind of reference the NuGet packages that we want. And to do that, we do NuGet colon, and then we specify the package name. So for ML.NET, it will be Microsoft.ML. And I, we can do a comma to specify a specific version. So I'll do 1.4 preview. And then I'm going to get auto ML as well. And another thing that Microsoft has been doing has been creating kind of a data frame C sharp API and it's kind of used to be the C sharp equivalent to pandas on Python. This package along with the Jupyter kernel are pretty early previews, probably early or mid alpha stages, I would say, but we can play with it right now. And to do that would be Microsoft.data, that data frame, would be zero, one, and we can control enter to install these. And while that's installing, uh, the Microsoft data that data frame package isn't in the the main NuGet feed, so we have to actually add a new feed to it. And what you can do is that you can open up your NuGet.config in your app data roaming location under NuGet, and then you can add this key here for Core FX Lab, and that'll allow you to get the data frame package there. And these actually installed successfully. 
And I like to do all my using statements or imports kind of upfront. So I'll do all those there. We use Microsoft.data for the data frame and uh, ML.net packages and the AutoML package. With the data frame, it actually makes it pretty easy to read in CSV files. So we do data frame dot read CSV and I have the housing CSV that we have messed with before. There we go. But if you look at it right now, it actually didn't parse very well. So currently we have to do kind of this formatter with the data frame object to allow it to read in correctly. So now, if you read this in again and look at it, it reads it in correctly with the regular data frame that we would expect from Pandas. And the data frame package uh, gives us uh, a few things. We can do a description on it, similar to what we would do in Pandas. So we do length, min, max, and mean, and all that. So in the future, I plan on doing another video that goes over several, several parts of the data frame API. But for now, let's just continue on and create our mo.net context. And we'll go ahead and create an experiment using the ML, the auto ML package. We can create regression experiment. And we set max experiment time in seconds to just 10 seconds. And from there, from the experiment, we can execute it. And right now, we have to manually parse the data into an iData view since that's what the execute method takes. And we tell the label column name to be median house value. And so we'll let that run. That completed successfully. And so now we can get our result, the best run and we can look at the trainer name. And so it's a determined a fast tree regression was the best run that I made. And we can also look at the validation metrics and the R squared metric. It's spelled, there we go. And we have about 85% for our R squared, so not too bad for the initial 10 second run in the auto ML. All right, I'll end things there. Just wanna kinda of show how you can install the .NET kernel for Jupyter Notebooks and how you can, first how you can get NuGet packages within the Jupyter Notebook and then use the auto ML feature within it and to kinda of introduce this new data frame package that Microsoft has been working on, which uh, should be really nice once it gets a lot more work to it. All right, that's it for now, and hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.